Sup you cool cats and kittens, in this video I'm going to teach you how to get better at Risk of Rain 2. This video is designed for players of all skill levels that want to level up their gameplay. I have over 2600 hours in this game with over 300 Eclipse 8 wins, and in that time I've learned quite a bit. I have 5 tips for you that I can guarantee will improve your runs and help you impress your friends. Tip number 1. Don't worry about how much time you're spending on a stage. This is advice you won't hear from many people. You may have been told that you should be spending 5 minutes a stage as a general rule. I disagree with this completely, and I think it's very bad advice to give to a new player. The idea behind this is the difficulty in Risk of Rain 2 is always increasing, so by limiting the amount of time you spend on each stage, you'll be keeping the difficulty low, and the monsters won't outscale you. Now, this isn't inherently a bad strategy, but there are a number of problems with it. For one, it requires you to be very efficient with your looting. If you're only spending 5 minutes on each stage, you really have to rush and take whatever items you can get, and because you're getting so few items, you really can't rely on them. When you're only getting a couple items a stage, those items need to be really good. The survivor's skills alone are not enough to carry you through this game. Items are essential. You're going to have a tough time learning the items in the game if you're not picking very many up either. 2. From a difficulty scaling standpoint, this strategy doesn't do what it claims to. 5 minutes a stage is very simplistic and assumes difficulty is calculated by time, which it isn't. Difficulty rises every time you complete a stage as well, and it's a lot more complex than time equals difficulty. I see a lot of people struggle with this strategy, and my advice to you is to not worry about how long you're spending on a stage. Try to get every item on the map as efficiently as possible. Sometimes this can mean more than 10 minutes a stage, and if you're new to the game, maybe even longer. The more you do this, the faster you'll get, as you'll be learning the maps a lot better than if you were rushing. You'll also learn a lot more about the items and have more time to fine tune your build. As a general rule, items make you stronger faster than time makes you weaker. An example I always like to give is on stage 1, you'll have a way harder time fighting the teleporter boss if you rush it without picking up any items than you would if you spent a few minutes collecting items before the fight. Even though the boss in the first instance had lower health at a lower difficulty, the fight is much easier only having a few items even if the boss is quote unquote harder. Tip number 2, don't use artifacts. No! Artifacts. No, 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 no! Artifacts. Yes! Now, I love artifacts. This channel was built on finding wacky ways to break the game with them, but with that being said, they don't teach you very much about the game. Most artifacts are okay, but there are two artifacts that are very egregious and detrimental to your learning, those being Command and Sacrifice. Initially, these artifacts can be very useful to help you get into the game. I found players that use them regularly hit a plateau with their skill level. The Artifact of Command lets you pick your items. Needless to say, this is very powerful and it guarantees every run to be a god run. I feel like there's some obvious problems with that, but the main one is it simply takes away the roguelike experience. A large part of this game is getting random items and being able to adapt as a player to whatever the game throws at you. Command takes this away. With this artifact, there's nothing to adapt to when you already know what the next item is going to be. This artifact can be fun to experiment with for new builds, but I've found that people generally pick the same items over and over with this artifact and stick to what works. By playing with the randomness, you're getting a lot more opportunities to try new things and become adaptable as a player. Sacrifice is a little less harmful, but I would still argue it's not a good idea to use it regularly. Sacrifice changes the way you loot. With this artifact, you don't have to learn the maps, you can just sit in one spot and farm monsters forever. I also think this artifact gives you more loot than in the normal game, especially on the later stages. And there's also something to be said for these artifacts taking away from the core experience of the game. Obviously, if you find Command Sacrifice fun, who am I to tell you otherwise? But for me personally, I find I have a lot more fun when I'm being challenged and I have obstacles to overcome. Tip number three, and this is arguably the most important one. Learn how to dodge attacks. Now, this may sound like obvious advice, but this is something that not a lot of players do. Or at least this isn't a priority for most players. There are two ways to deal with enemies' attacks in this game. The first is to take it like a champ and hope you have enough healing to recover in time for the next time you get hit, or you can simply not get hit in the first place. I see most people using the former strategy rather than the latter, for good reason. Risk of Rain 2 can sometimes feel like a bit of a bullet hell, especially if you're not very experienced with the enemy's attack patterns. Healing from damage is a lot easier than avoiding it altogether. However, this strategy doesn't teach you anything about the game, and can hinder your skill. Now, I'm not saying to create a Quizlet set to meticulously study every enemy's behaviors, that would be insane, and really boring. Instead, try to rely less on healing and invest those items into movement speed and items that make you dodge easier. The next tip will also really help you learn this. But while I'm on the subject of adopting a more mobile playstyle, I would like to mention when charging the teleporter, you don't need to stay in it the whole time. If you're getting overwhelmed, there's no need to repeatedly slam your head into enemies until one of you wins, you can leave it and come back. If you've ever played Call of Duty Zombies, you can hoard monsters in this game in a very similar fashion. 
The same principles apply in Risk of Rain 2. It's a lot easier to fight monsters if they're all in one place than trying to fight a battle on all fronts. This is something that will come to you naturally if you follow my next tip, which is... Tip number four, play Eclipse. Eclipse difficulty is one of the best tools you have for learning the game. If you don't know what it is, Eclipse is essentially just New Game Plus mode. There are eight levels of Eclipse, it starts on Monsoon difficulty, and each time you beat the game, you move up an Eclipse level and a new modifier is introduced to make the game harder. Beating an Eclipse level does not carry over from Survivor to Survivor, meaning you'll have to beat the game 104 times to conquer this game mode. And I know that sounds like a lot, but honestly it's a blast, and I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't think it was fun. If you feel like you're starting to get the hang of Monsoon difficulty, I encourage you to give it a try. You can even play this game mode in multiplayer now. Each Eclipse level teaches you something new about the game. It starts off pretty simple, Eclipse 1 makes you spawn on each stage with half your maximum health. Aside from nerfing engineers turrets a little bit, this isn't too bad. It's basically just Monsoon difficulty, but you have to pay attention to your health bar a little bit more. Eclipse 2, Teleporter Radius is half the size. This teaches you how to strafe, and that sometimes you have to walk away from a fight to win. Eclipse 3, fall damage is doubled and lethal. This is where things start getting tough. This forces you to pay more attention to how you play, as simple mistakes can now be very punishing. Eclipse 4, enemies move 40% faster. This makes you pay more attention to movement, getting distance from an enemy is now much harder without movement items. Eclipse 5, all healing is half as effective. This is where things start to get really difficult. Healing is now much less reliable, and this forces you to focus on dodging and avoiding damage instead of healing from it. Clip 6, enemy gold drops minus 20%. This one isn't a huge deal, but it forces you to loot a little bit more efficiently. Clip 7, enemy cooldowns minus 50% meaning enemies attack twice as much. This forces you to learn enemy attack patterns and how to dodge them effectively. And finally, Eclipse 8. You now receive permanent damage. This isn't as bad as it sounds, only a portion of the damage you take is permanent and it resets on each stage, but this modifier once again puts an emphasis on the importance of avoiding attacks instead of recovering from them. If you can dodge attacks effectively, the new safer spaces and oddly shaped opal items are incredibly powerful, because they really complement the more mobile playstyle. If you're only getting hit once every 15 seconds, you'll block the majority of the damage you take. Honestly, Safer Spaces is one of the most broken items in the game, and it astounds me that people think it's bad. If you beat Eclipse 8, you'll have so much knowledge about the game, and you'll have a lot of experience that's impossible to learn from just playing Monsoon or Rainstorm. Going back to Monsoon after playing Eclipse 8 is like going from Monsoon to Drizzle. It's very noticeable. Unless you abuse Lunar, which brings me to my next tip. Tip number five, limit your Lunar usage. Lunars are OP and will prevent you from getting better, so limit their use. I know this is advice nobody wants to hear, but it's the truth. To give you an example, let's examine Transcendence on Eclipse 8. This item converts all of your health into shield and gives you 50% more of it. This item eliminates half of the Eclipse modifiers. Eclipse 1, 3, and 5 just don't exist anymore, and Transcendence also heavily nerfs Eclipse 8 because the permanent damage threshold is higher the more health you have. Needless to say, this makes the game a lot easier, and in my mind this defeats the point of Eclipse difficulty. Feel free to use it, just know you're hindering yourself from getting better. I have a couple other Lunars I want to go over. Spinal Tonic. This is a Lunar equipment that gives you 100% more damage, 70% more attack speed, 20 armor, 50% more health, 300% more passive regen, and 30% more movement speed for 20 seconds. The downside to this item is you have a 20% chance to gain a Tonic Affliction that reduces all of your stats by 5%, which might be balanced except this debuff is removed while Tonic is active, meaning you only need 4 Gestures of the Drowned and a couple of Fuel Cells to have this active all of the time. Gesture is another Lunar that's pretty ridiculous, you greatly reduce your equipment cooldown, but it's activated automatically. Oftentimes, the automatic activation is beneficial to runs and not a hindrance like it should be. Combining Tonic with Gesture is still the most powerful thing in the game, even with all these crazy newfangled Void items, and I think that combination in particular will really prevent you from getting better, which is exactly what Big Pharma wants. Say no to Lean, it's an opioid, you'll get hooked. Glass is another Lunar item I'd stay away from. This doubles your damage but halves your health. This is very powerful, particularly when stacking it, because it's exponential. One glass is twice as much damage, two glass is four times as much, three is eight, and so on. The health reduction is a legitimate downside, but it doesn't outweigh the benefit of doubling your damage. Having your health doesn't really matter when you're killing everything instantly. I don't think Lunars would be so bad if you couldn't just stock up on them in the bazaar after stage one, and I'm not trying to be elitist or anything. If that's something you like to do, great, it's a PvE game, who cares? But I do think if you play that way, you're detracting from your own experience with the game. There's loads of things you can do to get better at the game, these are the most important things for me to learn, and I hope they helped you with your runs. If you learned something, leave a like or comment something like, I have a massive PP and I'm not insecure about it at all. I have a lot of great content coming to the channel. I took my time making content with the DLC because it didn't seem right to make informational content on something I'm still learning myself, 
but I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on it now and you should start to see a lot of content coming out. So subscribe. All right, that about does it. Have a great day, everybody. Ta-ta for now.